It's time to get philosophical as the mob rules in ancient Greece. We're taking a quick peek at Oculus Omega. Oculus Omega is a game about brainwashing the general public into blindly following your cause. A cause where, more likely than not, they will end up dead. You, a lone philosopher, have become unhappy with how the Olympians have been treating their subjects. This unhappiness leads to one inevitable conclusion. Why even listen to the deities in the first place? Thinking is a dangerous pastime, but one you must wield like a disease. After all, one mortal cannot hope to stand against the gods, but an unruly mob just might have a chance. Released in 2016, the original version of Oculus was Coffee Powered Machine's second game after Gravity Fleet, a strategy game for the mobile market. Oculus manages to break into new territory for the developer by being in 3D! Well, kinda. The world of Oculus is in 3D, but things like characters and set dressings are 2D pixelated sprites viewed from an isometric perspective. It's somewhat like the third-person mode of old first-person shooters, except actually playable. The mix of dimensions really helps give the game some unique design. It enhances the pixelated graphics that many people have grown weary of over the years, while also keeping down costs due to the limited use of 3D models. Boundaries in buildings are basically the only thing that reaches into the third dimension. Boundaries to give players a clear indication of where they can go, and buildings because 3D explosions just look that much cooler. Really, Oculus is a game about destroying things. Destroy people, destroy random objects, destroy buildings, destroy the gods. But only if your mob is feeling up to it. Persuading those around you to give up their time-honored traditions and follow your new way of thinking is as simple as walking into them, as walking into them is how you get them to join your mob. The main things to keep in mind are how many of them are currently within your mob as well as how much unrest they possess. Fighting enemies and breaking stuff while gathering more and more members will slowly enrage the crowd. Enrage them enough and not even well-fortified architecture can stand in their way. Look at them go! Isn't it just adorable? There are a limited amount of instructions you can dish out to your new colleagues, however. I've heard many people compare the mechanics of Oculus to Pikmin, but I wouldn't say they're all that similar on anything more than a basic level. Both games are about gathering and controlling large groups, but Pikmin constantly introduces new ideas through its combat variety and puzzle-like obstacles. Oculus, on the other hand, only really cares about combat. You can only tell your mob to do three or four different things. Attack, defend, spread out, come together, and use whatever items they may have collected. Enemies are limited to how they act, which leads to a lack of variety throughout the game. The only real strategy is to surround and pummel whatever the game tells you is the target while quickly switching to defense when it attacks back. The main challenge of Oculus isn't really the enemies, but more learning how to control your mob. Figuring out how to dip in and out of combat as well as pushing and pulling your mob around enemies and obstacles is key to staying alive. After all, without your mob, you are nothing and will slowly fade into obscurity in their absence. Oculus has a few different kind of people you can collect, with one of the more important groups being philosophers. They act as extra lives, and if the current mob leader happens to die, then the next philosopher will take their place as long as there's more within the mob. Other types of people include citizens, animals, soldiers, slaves, and heroes. Citizens are just kind of standard with no perks, but soldiers can be either good at offense or defense depending on the type. Animals do a fantastic job of tasting delicious, but do nothing to help nor hinder your mob, while slaves carry consumables and heroes are how a mob gets more powerful. Not only is your mob your sword and shield, but also your currency. In between areas in each level, players get access to a trader who will let you trade units in your mob for more powerful hero units. 
Heroes can do all sorts of crazy things, from buffs to debuffs and special abilities. There are tons of heroes to unlock and collect from Greek history and mythology, as well as less period-centric characters like Albert Einstein and Atoga, because that's what I wanted to see in my lifetime. Heroes can do anything from increasing mob capacity, turning enemies into pigs, as well as carrying multiple consumable items. Consumables are important to have around. They include meat, meat, more meat, invincibility power-ups, and explosive barrels. Consumables your mob has collected can be used by pressing a corresponding number key, and can be key to turning the tide of a fight. I mostly save them for boss fights when possible, but you can use them at any time. Bosses in Oculus are really the bread and butter of the game, as each one is rather unique. It's the only time I ever had to do much in the way of planning, as I figured out how they acted. Most bosses have the ability to lower a unit's morale as well as their health bar, causing them to sometimes leave the mob and just wander off. Keeping an eye on where your mob is, how they're acting, where the boss is, and what they're doing can make some of these fights tense. That is, unless you've got a giant mob and kill the boss in 5 seconds. Oculus is very dependent on upgrades, as the limited controls don't give you many options. You can't select each unit type individually, put your mob in any kind of formation, nor even dismiss one unit from your mob so you can replace them with a different unit. Due to this, I found the max mob capacity upgrades to be almost necessary for success in order to have any hope of gathering the correct amount of different unit types to afford more powerful heroes. There's no way to gather more units during boss fights either, so if you don't have the right units going in, you're pretty much stuck. In early 2017, Coffee Powered Machine released an updated version of the game, titled Oculus Omega. Omega aims to expand the game while helping to fix some of the things players disliked about the original release. This includes adding new heroes, bug fixes, and enemies. The biggest change is how long the game is overall. In an attempt to lessen the repetitive nature of Oculus' combat, Coffee Powered Machine shortened the length of each of the seven levels in the main game. Originally, players had to complete five sectioned off areas before being allowed to fight the boss and move on to the next level. Unfortunately, with how shallow Oculus' combat is, along with the lack in variety of how players need to fight enemies, this quickly became dull. Each area only has one objective, kill all of the enemies. That's it. No variety or anything, just kill all the enemies, go to the shop, and do it over again. The game desperately needs more objectives, so players aren't constantly doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. Sure, the game's randomization means that every room is different and there's some variety with areas focused on hazards and traps, but it just doesn't do enough in the long run. I had really hoped to see something like this added in the Omega Edition, but it just isn't there. What is there is the addition of champion enemies. These range from kind of fun to fight to just completely unfair. Only one champion can spawn per level, and it's random as to which one it could be or where they could show up, but when they do show up, they cannot be ignored. Some of the more fun champions to fight are the Trojan Horse that's so awesome it has to be in 3D, as well as a healer that makes enemies a bit tougher, but most of them are annoying or frustrating. One particular champion constantly spawns in enemies until it dies, just floods the area with foes that go straight for the mob leader as opposed to the mob. It is ridiculous how many enemies can get on the screen at one time. Other champions mostly exist to one-hit kill everyone in your mob, or basically cause you to instantly lose. Every now and then I came across a pair of Gorgon Snake Ladies who would turn my entire mob into stone all at once, only leaving the mob leader alone. Without a mob, the right begins to calm down, and if the right ends, it's game over. 
there's nothing you can do to unfreeze your mob either besides wait it out. But the Gorgons can refreeze them almost instantly, so in reality, you just can't do anything. Omega also added a new type of basic enemy, which are these guys in explosive barrels that run specifically at the mob leader, hoping to blow them up. Some areas are filled solely with this kind of enemy, and they wreak ridiculous amounts of havoc on your mob, with little to nothing you can really do about it, especially when they group together. Omega was also supposed to fix up some of the game's bugs and glitches, but I ended up running across more of them now than I did before. Sometimes you can randomly get stuck on seemingly nothing to the point that you can't move. This seems to mostly happen around destroyed buildings, but I've also had it happen within a boss fight for no apparent reason. Thankfully, instead of having to completely restart from the beginning, you can just quit from the main menu and restart from the beginning of the level you were on. But you've still got to redo everything up to the point where you got stuck. Quitting and loading can also be abused a bit if you find yourself in a bind during something like a boss fight. Just quit and reload till you've got the right mob composition or get lucky enough to beat the boss and move on. Overall, I was a bit disappointed with Oculus Omega and Oculus in general. I really enjoyed the preview build I played for the game a few years ago as it showed a lot of potential with the game's concept. The final product didn't quite live up to that potential to me since it lacks much in the way of strategy and skill. Throughout the game, whatever happened and whatever situation I was in felt more like I was being lucky or unlucky than anything I had any real control over. Oculus is being sold as a roguelike game, but there's just not enough depth there for me to really enjoy my time. At its best, it can be good for some chaotic and mindless fun, but it very quickly became frustrating or just annoying with how areas are laid out and whichever champions happen to show up. The gameplay is just a little too repetitive for a game designed to be played through multiple times in order to unlock everything that it has to offer for my particular tastes. Heroes are the only thing that kind of changes up how you play, but they just don't do enough. A successful run from start to finish lasted me a little less than an hour, but I've read some people were able to beat the game on their second try, while others, like myself, took a little while longer than that. I really want to be able to recommend the game, since I like a lot about it. I really like its unique visuals paired up with some good music that mixes traditional Greek sounds with some old school video game vibes. However, if you're looking for something with depth, you aren't going to find it here, but it is at a decent price of $12.99 US on Steam and GOG compared to other roguelike titles. That's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think about the game or this video in the comment section. I've Mega Pie Man. I'll talk to you guys later. Want to see more quick peeks? Click on the video on the left to check out How to Shoot a Criminal, a modern FMV game similar to her story. Or click on the video on the right to hear about Pre Dynastic Egypt, a turn based strategy game about creating the country of Egypt.